for the Kaiser Goodness of Fit test, but this time we are going to apply it to a normal, distribu normal distributed um, data set. So if you haven't watched the first video regarding the uniform distribution, I would recommend you do that because I went through the basic steps of the Goodness of Fit test. Um, but the way you calculate the expected value will be different for the type of probability you're going to go through. So I would recommend you go through that video first. So um, we have an example here, and we have the weight of people, a uh, weight sample of a group are normally distributed. So here is the keyword from the beginning. And um, it's giving you all the information regarding the, um, the mean and the standard deviation. So we have the normally distributed, we have the mean, and we have the standard deviation. So these are the important information. Um, and then we have the district nurse weighs 200 people. So this will be important as this will be our total. So this is the total or the frequency is 200. And that's usually given at the beginning of the question or at some part. So this is the table we get. And then the question wants you to do the expected frequency table. Now, because it's normally distributed, it means that we expect certain values to appear in here. So we expect a certain frequency, and that's what they want. So even if you're not doing a chi-square goodness of fit test, um, an expected frequency table will always follow the same path with um, how I'm going to show you. So the way to find the expected frequency, what you're going to do is, because it's a normal distribution, you're going to use the normal uh, CDF in the calculator and use that to predict how much, um, how many people will be between weights 50 and 55 and so on. So the way to do it is you'd use your calculator, you'd go to the um, normal CDF. So your lower bound and upper bound will be based on the data that you have. So the lower bound here is 50 and then upper bound is 55. And what, we, what you're gonna get, and then this is the mean and standard deviation, and then what you're gonna get is the probability. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is calculate the probability with the total frequency. So that's what you call expected value. So even when you did normal distribution question, there was always a question about expected value. And the way you do it is always uh, the total multiplied by the probability. So we found the probability 0.58885 um, and so on. So we multiply it by the 200 and that's gonna give us 100 and. 17.77 and that will be the expected value for uh, the weights from 50 to 55 so out of the 200 people I expect 117.77 to be between those um, weights now you would keep it to two decimal places because the whole table is to two decimal places so you want to keep consistency you do the same thing for the 55 to 60 so your 55 is now the lower bound the 60 is upper bound you calculate it and then you get the um, the expected value, multiply the answer by 200 to get 30.96. So that's how you get the expected frequency table for the normal distribution. Um, so when you're follow, when we're gonna follow the um, chi-square goodness of fit test and they ask for expected frequency table, that's how you do it. You just use the normal CDF. And the process is different for the different types of distributions you're gonna see. Now the question still didn't ask for a goodness of fit test, but we're gonna get there. Um, so if also just to note, if you're looking at uh, here, for example, so it's anything below 45, so up, uh, 45 will be your upper bound, and the lower bound will be negative infinity, and you should know how to write negative infinity if you watch the normal distribution videos. And in here, anything above 60, so your lower bound will be 60, and then your upper bound will be the positive infinity, which is 1E99, negative infinity is um, negative 1E99. So that's calculator notation. Now, part B wants you to rewrite the observed frequency table such that the expected frequency are greater than five. The reason that is, is you can't, in a normal situation, you can't conduct a chi-square test if your expected values are less than five. So what we wanna do, if you notice here, we have an issue here and we have an issue here. So the way to overcome this, even if you're doing an internal assessment, so the way you'd overcome this is to combine the groups. So what I'm gonna do is combine the groups together. So I wanna, I, I want to get, not get rid of this, but combine this with another group so that this is not less than five. So I'm gonna combine it with this group. 
And then this is also 0 0.77, so I'm going to combine it with the next group. And then I don't need to combine this middle one. So the new categories I'm going to get are any weights less than 50, because I'm combining these two together. So now I'm not taking less than 45. My maximum is 50, because I'm taking all of these. So let me just do it on a number line. So this was 45, and then 50, let's say 55. Um, so my first category was... Um, my first category was this, my second category was this. But now what we've done is we've combined these categories. So what you have now is something less than 50 instead of less than 45. So that's uh, the first category. The second one is just 50 to 55. We're not going to change it. And the last one is going to be from 55 up and anything bigger than 55. Because again, if I look at a number line, this is my 55, 60, and the first category was um, 55 to 60, and then the next category was 60 and above. But now my new category will be 55 and above, So I because I've combined both of them together. So my last category will be anything bigger than 55, or you can switch the notation. Just make sure W is bigger. The observed right now, what you're going to do is just combine the values. So we're going to do 12 plus 44, so that's going to be 56. And then this is just 82. And then we have 53 plus 9. And you're going to do the same thing for expected frequency, or if you want to, you can recalculate them using the normal CDF. And we're just going to add the first two. This will stay the same, and then the last two. So um, we, this is how you, this is the table we're going to use now for the next few questions. So we have part C, D, and E. So part C um, asks you to write the degree of freedom. But we're going to use the new table now because this is how, because our expected frequencies are better. They're not uh, less than 5. So the degree of freedom is going to be the number of categories you have minus 1. And the number of categories we have is 3. So it's going to be 3 minus 1, so that's 2. Now, for part D, it wants you to do, now it wants you to do the goodness of fit test. And in order to do it, you're going to have to um, just follow the same process. Now it's going to be the exact same process as the uniform distribution uh, video, but it's, um, we just have the new table here of the observed and expected frequency. So um, first, let's start stating the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So the null is that the weights are normally distributed with a mean of 52 and standard deviation of 3 kg. And the alternative is that they're not normally distributed. So remember, that's what the goodness of fit test does. So in terms of the calculator, um, you are going to enter your observed and expected in the list. So we're going to take our new ones. Remember, because chi-square, you're not allowed to have uh, an expected frequency uh, less than 5. So we did the combination, and now we got our new list. So this is the list. This is the, expect this is the observed, and this is the expected. Then you're going to go to stat, test, and then pick the goodness of fit test. Then you're going to put your L1, L2, and then your degree of freedom that you calculated, and then click on calculate. So this is what you're going to get. And the first one is your chi-square value. The second one is your p-value. Just be careful. Your p-value is with an e negative 9. So that's 1.73 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So it's actually a very small number. So just be careful about that. So that was for part D. It just wants you to conduct the, the, the test and the result. But now for part E, they want you to state the conclusion of the test. So be careful when do they ask you to do the conclusion, either in the part or in another part. Now they're telling you that the critical value is 5.991 and the significance level is 5%. So if I just do my comparison, you could do using one value or both values. So I have my chi-square and my critical value, the critical value given in the question. So my chi-square is obviously bigger. My p-value is smaller than the significance level. The significance level was 5%, but we write it as 0.05. So that means that we can conclude the test and say that we reject the null and accept the alternative hypothesis, or you can say we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and we say the weights are not normally distributed with a mean of 52 kg and a standard deviation of 3. So there's a lot of evidence to say that actually they're not distributed. And hopefully you can see with the big difference between the expected and the observed um, that that's the case.
So hopefully this was clear. We're following the same process, but the trick was to be able to find the expected frequency. And then if a question asks you to combine or do such combination, that's all you have to do is just to rearrange the groupings.